So Quentin Tarantino is getting some backlash about his betrayal of Bruce Lee in Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. And after seeing the flick, I knew that was going to happen because, yes, when you watch the, the, the scene that it happens, you know, it's kind of like eh, somewhat caricature-ish. And when it's like a little fight between him and Brad Pitt's character, Cliff Booth, you kind of just take it as, well, this is pretty entertaining because it's a very entertaining scene, but of course... Everyone is outraged. Well, at least they're not like Times Magazine, and they went to the went to a screening of the movie and counted all the words that females say, so they could use that against Quentin Tarantino once again to try to pin misogyny on him. Misogyny on Quentin Tarantino, who never has a female lead kick ass. <laughs> What's happening, film friends? Dave the Film Junkie here. All right, I wanted to chime in on this because this was uh, talked about, obviously, and I knew this was going to be controversial. And, uh, you know, Bruce Lee's daughter has came out and was not a fan. Other people said stuff. Even Joe Rogan thought it was, like, that not a good portrayal. A lot of people didn't really, really like how Bruce Lee was portrayed in uh, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. My opinion on the whole thing was it's fucking Quentin Tarantino. You're taking it seriously. I'm wondering if Sharon Tate's family was upset the way they portrayed her, especially at the end. It's fantasy! That's why it's called Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. And even the actor who played, uh, who played Bruce Lee, which I think if they do a Bruce Lee biopic, like a genuine one, they should cast him to do it because he did a fantastic job. He said when he first read the script, he was like, wow. And he was like, kind of a little iffy about it at first because Bruce Lee was like his hero. But then he goes off and says, this is a Tarantino film. He's not going to do that thing that everybody expects anybody else to do you got to expect unexpected and number two i knew from the jump tarantino loves bruce lee and reveres him which is true as well kill bill the outfit she wears at the end but now we're going to hear from the man himself who is now going to respond to this i guess he was at a press press junket in russia and there's his quotes right here he said bruce lee was kind of an arrogant guy you know what's funny though is i've actually looked into stuff Apparently he kind of was. Maybe not as caricature-ish as he was in Once Upon a Time, but yeah. And then he talks about, uh, you know, of course the scene where he's being all swaggering on the uh, Green uh, Hornet set, talking about Muhammad Ali, this, that, and this. He said, the way he was talking, I didn't make a lot of that up. I heard him say things like that to that effect. If people were saying, well, he never said he could beat up Muhammad Ali, well, yeah, he did. Not only did he say that, but his wife, Linda Lee, said that in her first biography I ever read. She absolutely said that. Now, if he said it's in the biography, I haven't double-checked that, but if Tarantino says it, odds are it's in there. They also put the, uh, the Shannon Lee quote that said he was continuously marginalized and treated like kind of a new nuanced of a human being, being, being by wa white Hollywood, which is how he's treated in my... F I mean, I get that, like, he had some struggles that he had and blah, 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 but I mean, I mean, look at the, uh, just go back to that, that, the brand, the, the Bruce Lee story, Enter the Dragon, they made him look fucking good. And it was fantasy, a lot of it was, in that, that biopic that came out in the early 90s, which I enjoyed the shit out of, because I liked Bruce Lee movies. I had a DVD collection with Fist of Fury with a Chinese, there was a Chinese connection, I had those movies, and I thought they were great. Even the, the other ones that he was with, uh, with that one white dude. I can't remember his name, but you guys know what I'm talking about. Tarantino goes on by saying, Could Cliff beat up Bruce Lee? Brad Pitt would not be able to beat up Bruce Lee, but Cliff maybe could. If you ask me the question, who would win in a fight, Bruce Lee or Dracula? It's the same question. It's a, f a fictional character. If I say Cliff can beat Bruce Lee up... It's a fictional character, so he could beat Bruce Lee up. The reality of the situation is this. Cliff is a Green Beret. He has killed many men in World War II in hand-to-hand -hand, hand -hand combat. What Bruce Lee is talking about in the whole thing is that he admires warriors. He admires combat, and boxing is a closer approximation of combat as a sport. Cliff is not part of the sport. That is like, that is like combat. He is a warrior. He is a combat person. Makes sense. If Cliff were fighting Bruce Lee in a martial arts tournament in Madison Square Garden, Bruce would kill him. But if Cliff and Bruce were fighting in the jungles of the Philippines in hand-in-hand -hand combat fight, Cliff would kill him. 
It makes perfect sense. That was a shameful Tarantino impression right there. Um, but yeah, I mean, I only I took it as fantasy because I mean I guess we're far along now that if you're if you haven't seen it yet, you haven't seen it. And spoiler alert, but what happens at the end is not what happened to Sharon Tate. Dalton and, and Booth they end up killing those kids. In a very Tarantino-esque way. Once upon a time in Hollywood. The thing is, though, nowadays, everybody's so goddamn sensitive. See, this is what I love about Tarantino. He's still not afraid to be like, this is, this is it. This is my movie. This is what I write for. But everybody, of course, just tries to pin this on. They've been trying to pin misogyny now. I'm like, when that stupid-ass fucking L.A. Times reporter asks, why does, why does Margot Robbie have so many less lines than the other two? It's like, well, the movie is centralized mainly on the other two. Her story is just kind of like... You kind of just fall in love with her innocence, but you know in the back of your head what's supposed to happen to her. And then what ends up happening is absolutely fantastic. So, of course, naturally, the guys, the two leads, are going to have more lines. They're just really trying to pin all they can on them. Now, I can understand, okay, I can understand where, like, maybe if they saw that, they thought, okay, yeah, he does act like a character of himself. I totally get that. But at the same time, just like what the actor who played Bruce Lee said... It's a Tarantino movie. You never know what to expect. So that's where I just kind of land on the whole thing. And, uh, you know, he's defending it. And he's not going to... Don't think he's going to back down and apologize. The man is not going to do that. That's Quentin Tarantino for you, and I love it. And he's not going to apologize. He never will. So take it as that. So there you go, guys. Just wanted to chime in on that and kind of talk about it. Let me know your thoughts about it down below. What do you think about him defending it? Let me know down below in the balls area. Hit that like thumbs up button if you'd be so kind. Subscribe to my channel. at filmjunkie.com. For all my content, follow me on the Sock Meds over there, Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, Patreon if you want to help out the Pirate Ship, and of course, shirts and stickers. All right, guys? Oh, yeah, shirts and stickers down below. All right, bye.